Bert Oliva's Mastermind Circle. Welcome back to another Mastermind Circle session. Today we want to do things a little different, and we're going to come back and uh, explain that as more people start coming in. First of all, I want to thank all the new viewers. Welcome all the new viewers that we have, all the new members, and all the guests that we have. And before we get started, my name is Bert Oliva. I've been doing seminars at a professional level for over 21 years now. And we start with an introduction of what Mastermind is all about. A little video that tells you a little bit more about Bert. You guys ready? If you're ready, I need you guys to participate. Today is all about participation. So everyone, please raise your hands to make sure you're here so I can get the video started. Beautiful. There we go. So here we go with the video. Bert Oliva is an international orator. He speaks around the world about his experiences and teaches humanology, the scientific study of human potential. He has enchanted audiences all over the world, showing them the power of mind over matter. He's one of the most well, talented speakers out here, and I highly recommend him to any type of people. The more prepared you are, the luckier you'll be. He is the world-renowned authority on leadership and human behavior. Mr. Bert Oliva. Bert Oliva. He's considered the voice of inspiration and motivation. Today, he'll pass his knowledge on to all of us. For over two decades, Bert Oliva has touched the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. Bert has a dedicated social media following and an impressive online influence few possess, enabling him to communicate with audiences he has touched near and far. I think he's one of the greatest motivators out there. The thing I love about Bert is he's on stage and he gives his heart every single time. He has developed many programs, recorded audio CDs, and written books, all of which to help those ranging from individuals to corporate and Fortune 500 companies. He has dedicated his life to speaking all over the globe and met some of the most influential and powerful people in the world. Hey, let's go. He has also coached highly successful business executives and politicians. Normally seen as impossible. I believe that I did it. An infectious motivator. So get ready to learn tools that will help you tap into your potential. Pay attention, this is real stuff. Get ready to have an experience you won't soon forget. Please help me welcome Kurt Oliva. Welcome back. Now, today's session is going to be a little different than most of the other sessions we've had. I'm going to be doing a, little, a couple of these sessions every so often, and what it is is about real talk, is about bringing in people. And hopefully some of the Mastermind Circle members are the ones that are going to be in the panel. So if you're running a business or you're working for a business or you're creating your brand or you want to ask questions about your relationship, spirituality, whatever the case is, we're going to have panels where we're going to be able to answer these questions. However, this is where we have the story. See, this is a tool that we've used for many years, and the first thing is to get rid of that fear factor. See, if you want to be successful in life, well, well before I even get started, do you guys want me to be honest or nice? If you want me to be honest, raise your hands. I want to make sure you guys are with me. Raise your hands. Good, because I'm not that nice. <laughs> Today is not about being nice. Today is about real talk. It's about getting real results in your life. So I had an opportunity to either A, let me tell you how this works. This is a story, right? It doesn't have to be your life story. It could be a certain section of your life, a certain story that you've had in your life. And in that story, something happened. You had a test or a mess, and then you were able to fix it, and there was a process that came out of it, and the lesson learned. So there's a couple of members that reached out to me and said, Bert, you know what? I'm ready for another one. I want to go ahead and do another one of those five-minute presentations. But I wanted a lot of other members to have an opportunity to do it at least once. So I've had members to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to do it you know, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, a month from now. And we have a list of those members. However, there's been a couple of members, and you know who you are that when it comes time to do it, we either A, can't get in touch with you, or B, you decide that you have other things happening in your life and you don't want to do it. Now, I'm being honest. 
what you do here is what you're doing in your personal life, is what you're doing in your business. Does that make sense? If it does, raise your hands. This is really about interacting today. I'm not gonna let you just sit there passively. So the thing is, if you wanna go ahead and increase your life or your business, you gotta take action. With that being said, not one person today will be doing this message. And that says a lot. I mean, we've been doing this now for a couple of months now. And it's amazing how many members we've been able to acquire, how many people we have on the team. Some of the members won't go on the Facebook group. Some of the members just pay and watch it, the, the recorded sessions. And then there's those few members, which are strong members, that actually show up every Wednesday. They make it a point. The next step is to actually take action, is to get involved, do as much as you can. So I'm gonna skip this session, this section, and we're gonna talk about next week's speaker. If you want to be a speaker for the next session that we have, because next week we're gonna have a speaker, so we won't have a session. And if you wanna do that, get involved. Tell Valerie, by the way, let me break it down for you. We're not gonna leave you alone and let you go ahead and crash. We're not about that. Once you decide that you wanna do it, you will receive a uh, email or a PDF file that breaks it down for you, the steps that you need to take. And for that, whatever reason, if you need help, you reach out to one of us and we'll get back to you. We'll get you an allocated time where we can sit down and coach you through the process. Because let me tell you, if you're able to do this here, you're able to expand. Whenever you meet someone at a networking event or at a party, and they tell you what is it you do, you will be surprised how much easier you're able to connect with that person by doing this exercise. As much as you think, you know, and, and a lot of you are afraid, you're like, oh my God, my heart's gonna come out if I do this. Do it. When you face fear itself is when success starts happening. Does that make sense? I know it does. So today, I'm gonna make it short and sweet. We're gonna talk about, I wanna talk about three things. I wanna talk about real talk. It's a new term that's out there and everybody talks about it and then I wanna talk a little bit about ego and then I wanna talk about opportunities, right? And after I give you a brief, you know, maybe a few minutes of this rant, we'll call it a rant for lack of better words, then I'm gonna bring Alexa in and you will have access to Alexa and myself. So if you wanna ask questions, whether it's regarding, if we don't know the answer, we're gonna tell you, you know what, we'll get back to you. But if we do, we're gonna give you the best advice or our opinion on the matter. And this is like coaching you guys in the process and we can all learn from this. So if there's questions that you guys wanna ask, prepare yourself. Make sure that you're in front of a light so we can see your face. Make sure that you're dressed appropriately. So that way when you're here, it's a great opportunity to promote your business, what it is you do, and to ask great questions that otherwise would be almost impossible. And some of you are in different groups that I, I'm a part of, and you guys know how busy I get, and I'm not able to answer everyone's question. So we're gonna be doing these panels every so often, and I'm not gonna say when we're doing it, it's just gonna be a surprise, but this will be the first one. You mentioned from the beginning that you'd rather me be honest than nice. I'm gonna be nice, but I'm gonna be damn honest. Everyone talks about real talk, and then when they get it, they don't seem to want it. You know, real talk is just that. It's people that have done it, or are in the process of doing it, or have gone through certain situations or circumstances in their life, and they're giving you the tools that brought them out of it. And they're gonna tell you things that maybe you don't wanna hear, or you've heard it before from someone else, and it doesn't sit well. But if it doesn't sit well, it's because there's things you still need to work on. However, through real talk, it also doesn't have to be like you're getting beat up. It can also be a way of learning. A way of learning, wow, you know, that's a good way of doing things. So everyone has this new hashtag they've been using around for the past couple of months about real talk. Well, today we're gonna do that. We're gonna have real talk with you guys, with you folks. We're gonna be able to go ahead and answer some of your questions. The other issue I'm seeing a lot of is ego. You know, and I've said this before, ego is edging God out or edging greatness out. You're edging whatever is great in your life out. 
ego is one of the biggest downfall in order for people to have success in their lives. And we all have it. We all have three things, ego, greed, significant other, and not in that order. The whole thing is to find the balance. Whatever the balance is for you, and you will start succeeding, seeing success, you will start to succeed as long as you can balance it out. However, ego is the one I'm talking about today. Ego will hold you back from achieving your greatness. The reason is because a lot of times, you know, it's like, well, you know, I'm too good for this. Are you really? Are you really too good for this? And I'm not talking about master. I'm talking about whatever the case is. No, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, that's beneath me. Is it beneath you for real? See, because the day you think you've learned everything is the day you've lost everything. I mean, there's going to have to come a time in your life where you need to finally wake up and realize, you know what? I'm not going to allow my ego to keep getting in the way. So, like I was saying earlier, sometimes I tell people, you come to my seminar, you may not learn anything new. But if you learn, if I confirm one thing that's new, I truly believe that confirmation is better than learning something new. Sometimes something will trigger that says, you know what? I used to do this and maybe it's time for me to start doing it again. Does that make sense? So that's really what it's all about. So, you know, we're, we're talking about ego. We're talking about real talk. And the other thing I want to talk about is opportunities. How many opportunities are you leaving behind? Because of what we spoke about earlier, about being afraid and not doing your five-minute presentation. What opportunities are you leaving behind? Do you understand how powerful that presentation is? It's a perfect opportunity not only to practice and be in front of a camera and be able to have a video that's going to be out there forever promoting you and your business or whatever it is that you do. See, but a lot of things like that, you're leaving it be to, you know, maybe I should get lucky enough. I don't believe in luck. I believe that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. The more prepared you are, the luckier you're going to be. And that's what Mastermind Circle is all about. It's about getting you prepared. Getting you prepared so when things happen, you trigger and you work on your second nature process. So that way, things just don't happen. You make it happen. Does that make sense? Raise your hands if you guys are with me. Come on now. Yeah, I'm seeing more people here. Good. Now, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to bring Alexa in. And for those of you that are ready, because about, I'm about to go ahead and start bringing people in. If you're ready to ask questions, tell Valerie, hey, I'm ready to ask questions and come in. And again, do not come in to ask me a question of, you know, is it going to rain tomorrow? Because I'm not going to be able to help you with that. Ask me a sincere question. And if I give you an answer and it's not what you want to hear, then that's why we're going to be able to have real talk and go back and forth. This is an example of what we're going to be doing in the upcoming weeks and so forth. Special events. We're going to have different people come in and do a panel with us and you'll be able to ask some of you will be members that are members here and are expert or have taken their business to the next level we're gonna and ask you to be a part of our panel and then we're gonna have people you know communicate and connect with one another so this is something else that we're gonna add to the mix and also stay tuned because we're traveling in the next couple of weeks and you never know I may be doing a mastermind session on a Wednesday now everybody be doing it every Wednesday however I may be doing one on a Thursday maybe it's a special event so keep an eye out our goal is to give you as much content as we come across every week to help you take your life to that next level whatever level it is I just want you to live in your greatness does that make sense Because that's really what I'm all about I want to make sure that you succeed I want you to succeed so much that you leave me behind because that way then I have something to work towards and I know it's kind of crazy but that's the way I've done it my entire life everyone that I coach everyone is in my inner circle my outer circle I always help them with everything I have because I want them to be more successful than we are because it just that's what feeds me me and my team my wife everyone that's what we're all about that's what Bo is about so do we have the first person asking a question? My name is Chevy Gunn. I'm from uh, Sickle Mountain, Tennessee, right outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. And um, my question for you, Bert, is uh, I just opened it. I just recently uh, launched a new website called ChevyGunn.com. And I'm trying to get people to go to it anytime they want to go to Amazon to go through my website because I get credit for it. And I've been making videos and posting them on social media a little bit. 
is uh, can you think of some other ways that I can get it out there to, for people to go to my website? Since you're okay. part of the mastermind group, I've seen a lot of the stuff that you're doing. Number one, people don't like to do business with companies anymore. They like to do business with people. So okay. what has to happen with your website is it needs to be a little more personalized, a little more Chevy Gunnish, a little more about Chevy comes on and says, hey, you know, I'm Chevy Gun. I have the latest camping equipment. I have, don't let them know. No one needs to know how the back end is being ran. Because well, it, where, that's the problem with that is, is it takes them to Amazon. Exactly, sir. They'll, okay. they'll figure it out once they're there. Okay. The is because if, for example, I know a lot of people that don't like Amazon. They'd rather buy on eBay. So okay. automatically, by you saying that, they'll go ahead and not log in because they'd rather purchase their stuff on eBay. So what okay. you, you let them know, look, you know, my name is Chevy Gunn, you know, and I'm, I'm all about motivation and I like about being positive and, and I've noticed that, you know, there's a lot, we're, we're now in, everyone is going fishing. So I have some new fishing gear that's coming up. I want you to look at it. I want to do a blog on fishing and I want you guys to give me your feedback. I want you to, uh, my website is interactive. So if you come on and you leave me a comment, I'll go ahead and give you feedback and that, you know, you more about inviting them to a place where you can communicate with them and connect, not inviting them to come to your site so you can make money. Okay. I don't like that. People okay. on a subconscious level, they're like, at the end of the day, not everyone is about BOA. Not everyone is about seeing other people succeed. So a lot of people that you're going out to, they're not going to go ahead and reach out. I'll give an example. We have a affiliate program with Amazon. Not with a third party. We have one with Amazon, and we've had it for years. And it's about motivational missionaries tour. And what happens is that if you buy through there, we get credit, and we use that money to help the children programs that we do around the world. Right, right. Um, they they usually stumble across it and they do it. I, have you ever saw me? <laughs> no, because a lot of people won't go out of their way to buy through there. They would rather just go through Amazon. So uh, the only thing I would give the advice I'm giving you is. You know, start doing more blogs about Chevy Gun, who you are. Blog right. about the per the personality. You know, when we had Frank uh, Salas here last week, he mm -hmm. talked about your hat look cool and great. Create that character, so people can associate themselves. Well, I like this guy Chevy Gun. He's awesome. So you know what? Now that I'm on his site, I might as well just buy that new knife that he has posted up. And also make sure that your content at least changes once or twice a week. Because if I go there and I'm seeing the same content, I'm not going to go back after I see it the second time. Right. So people like, especially in social media, uh, fast food is not fast enough. They want everything yesterday. So that's why if you look at what we're doing, we always have a blog. We have a video. We have different content going up daily. Mm -hmm. So something will attract a person and then that's when they go ahead and take one of my videos and I'll get, you know, 2,000, 3,000 views. Okay. Uh, question: Since you're you're associate member for uh, with Amazon, so am I. Do they let you put personalized videos like in your on your page? I do it on my page, but we control. See, our I don't page. have control over mine. That's, that's, not, that's what I was telling you. We have control over our page. However, I would contact whoever it is that you're working with and mm -hmm. ask, you know, what are my limitations? Because if you paid for a service, you don't, you know, if it's a template and they're controlling it, and they're not going to allow you to post blogs and certain things, then chances are you're not going to succeed. Because you are you have to be different in today's industry. Right. People like different. And if someone else, if I go and buy their service, and I end up doing the same thing, the chances are that there's no personality on your site. They're not going to buy it. You want me to do this look? Yeah. <laughs> it's a great look. It's a great look, and it's authentic. You have the accent. You see, if you saw my motivational moment that I did today, yeah, uh, it talked about being flawless. And even though you know you have an accent, you know you wear a hat, whatever the case is, that's what people like. They want to make sure that you're real. You are that person, and that you know they they fall in love with the accent. They fall in love with you know, the, the, like I said, the right. Have my face, whatever. And the, and, I, and all over social media, I've got the boa logo with this hat on. Yeah, so. that's, that's what I would do. I would go ahead and, and work off of that. So I hope I answered your question, Chevy. Thank you very much. You're yes. welcome. Hey. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Felicia Reed, and I am calling from Upper Marlboro, Maryland today. Hello, Felicia. It's been a Hi. long time. Hi. 
My question is for Alexa Burt to the side. Alexa, you are a part of a very dynamic team. You are the other whole part. I want to know what tools do you use when it comes to making key decisions? How do you get this guy to just see things your way, come up with the benefits, the options? What, what tool do you use to communicate what's the best thing for both of you and the rest of the team behind you? So that's what I want to know from Alexa, not Bert. I don't want to hear it from him. I want to hear it from her. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I do, the very first thing when there's an idea brought to the table or I have an idea that I want to bring to the table, I research it, I strategize it. Um, kind of like I was going to tell Chevy a little while ago is for his, for his business right now, Chevy, uh, ChevyGun.com, um, he needs to analyze who, who he's talking to because he's trying to shoot out there to everybody, yes. but he needs to be specific within his target market. So I'll look at demographics, I'll look at population, I'll look at location, I look at everything. Who am I marketing to? And in this case, if I'm going to speak to my team, I, you know, I know my team very well. We're, you know, we all work together on a daily basis and travel around the world. So I present to them the way that I, ex that I know they expect for me to present to them. Right. Bert is a very visual person, so I need to use visuals with him. <laughs> so you know your audience, right? I mean, you have to know who your audience is always. It doesn't matter where you're going, whether it's your personal team, whether you know it's my husband, whether it's my children, you have to know how to speak to them. You need, you need to recognize how you want to communicate. Yes. Well, I commend you for doing a great job and for taking my question. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Felina, thank, you. thank you. I also wanted to respond to Chevy for his ChevyGun.com. Um, also, uh, when Bert was talking about changing your products up, maybe you should take a selection of products, maybe five to 10 products a week and kind of, you know, explain them and, and, and you know, just kind of um, promote those on your page to see if you attract the people that you're looking for as far as target audience. Um, so that's what uh, I wanted to tell Chevy. Chevy, you should be writing some of this stuff down, man. It's like the whole show is going towards you. We want you to succeed. <laughs> I'm Belinda and I am from Marshall, Minnesota. And my question is for both of you. So if I see my screen, it's like this. So you guys have a vast, deep knowledge of the industry and everything that you guys have done. And I'm sorry, I don't know exactly who all the members of Mastermind are. I wish I did. Um, but I think you would agree that you guys have kind of seen my career evolving. Um, from six months ago, I was working in healthcare and now I'm working from home. So, and what I'm doing from home is very hard for me to describe. So, for lack of a better word, could you guys give me a title or an area? Because, like you said, Alexa, you got to identify your, your target audience. So, can you help me? Sure. Bert, I don't know if you want to take it or if you uh, want me to respond to this one. Well, we're both going to, but ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Belinda, you know, the title that you hold within your own business is really whatever you feel that you are going, the value that you're going to provide to somebody. I know you were around uh, two weeks ago when Bill Walsh was here explaining to us that you build the value for the people, for your audience, for whoever you're marketing to. So having that title really is not important. Uh, what you need to know is that if you're saying that it's hard to explain what it is that you're doing, then it's hard for other people to understand what it is that you're doing. So you're limiting yourself with the amount of people that you're going to affect to buy your product or buy your service. So you need to really spell it out and make it simplify it. Because when you try to complicate things, people aren't as smart as you think they are. So you okay. need to really break it down for them so they really understand, so they can get a grasp immediately for what it is that you're doing. What I would add to that is that you have to own it. You know, it's like when someone tells me, you know, yeah, you know, what do you do for a living? I say, you know, I, I, I do seminars. I'm a motivational speaker and I do seminars all over the world. And they're like, oh yeah, my cousin Bill does that or Maria does that and that's fine. Okay. But they'll say, well, you know, what makes you different? And I say, well, I don't know, but for me, I love what I do. I love people. You have to earn, you have to own it. People can tell when you have certainty inside of you. It just, it, you vibrate different. 
You know, you vibrate at a different level of energy and people are attracted to that. You know, so there's a couple of things I tell people all the time. You know, there's those people that walk in the room. Then there's that other group that, you know, arrive in the room. But there's those few who take over the room. And that's the goal. When you walk in a room, everyone knows you're something, even if you're nothing, because you're walking with certainty. And I'm not talking about ego. I'm talking about being certain about your product, your service, what it is that you have and what you can deliver. Bert, one of the things that you just brought up right now, which was very important um, in my book, that is, is you just touched upon ego um, and you talked about being certain. But I think a lot of people have that confused as to what ego and being being confident in whatever you're doing, they confuse it a lot. And maybe you can expand or elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, well, there's a thin line. There's a very thin line in everything in life. It's very thin. And a lot of times we cross that line. You know, the difference, the way I look at it, it's just, again, my opinion. You know, ego, when you have a big ego, people don't want to be around you. You may be the best looking person in the world. You may dress the perfect way. You may have the most expensive watches and cars. You're just, it's just people don't want to be around you. When you have certainty, you can be in a tank top and shorts and people want to be around you. You will attract them. It's a different attraction. And they'll see, man, you don't have to wear a certain outfit or say certain words to understand that your, your, your certainty is what people are going to buy. They're going to say, you know what, this person is, I want to learn from this person. This person is, is, is real. This person, that's what you want. So it's not falling into the, uh, I know everything. My name is Bert Oliva and you're not. <laughs> that wouldn't work. And, and it does work for a little bit. It does work for a little bit. There's a lot of people in our industry that act that way. You know, when you see someone that's always really motivated and you try to take them off of that and you say, talk to me for real. And they just, they don't go off. They don't won't come off of that. That's be very careful because whenever you have those peak, you're going to have those valleys. You want to find people that are balanced that can go ahead, scream at you and also talk to you. So finding your balance, you know, finding your, you, who you are. And I talked to you about this before, Belinda, finding your voice. Your voice, not Bert's voice or Alexa's voice or anyone, Tony Robbins' voice, you know, Les Brown. No, no, what's your voice? What's made me successful is that I found my voice. And for those people that know me, like I, I've gone to parties, like at Anthony's house, a real good friend of mine. He's a member too. And I don't steal the show. In fact, people tell me all the time, well, you're here. Why don't you do something? I mean, I'm not here to do tricks, <laughs> you know. But when I was younger, it was all about me wanting to help people so much that I was crossing that line with ego when I can read a person in 30 seconds or less. And, and then now it's like, you know, you ask, I tell. You don't ask, I'm still loving you. I, you know, I love people and this is what I love what we do. So I, I don't know if I said it and I, I answered your question, Alex, but I kind of went back and forth like I always do. That's why Alex keeps me on check. So Felicia was right. You know, let me ask Alex. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I value both of your opinions very highly. I think you both know that. And um, thank you very much. And I'm going to continue to work on that. And let me call upon you. Thank you. Thank you. Alex, you know, one thing I didn't mention, and, and I want people to understand is that when you have certainty, you feel it. You get that goosebump in your body. You know, you get the little goosebumps. It's like, not, not that you know everything, not that you're so knowledgeable, is that, certain, is that feeling of certainty is such a beautiful thing. I think it, that confidence comes when you really know your craft. I'm not very confident when I go to the gym every morning because I've only been going for a year. So I'm not really confident at the machines. I'm not really confident at what I know, but give me another couple of years and I'll build my confidence back up there and hopefully look the way I want to look. So <laughs> Alessandro, welcome. Hello. Well, first of all, hi to you, Bert and Alexa. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, my name is Alessandro Lima. I'm here. I live here in Miami, Florida, and I work with Sergio Mesa and Joe Cotto at Lifeline Insurance and Financial Consulting. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, my question is for you, Bert. Um, you were talking about, about like, for example, like before I even got on this call, I get like these little jitters, like these nerves that pop into me when, uh, when I have to do something like a meeting or a conversation, stuff like that. But then when I'm doing it, like for example, right now, I go fast. You probably hear it in my voice and I'm going fast. I want to know what advice you could give me that I can slow down and more be more calm 
and more down to earth, if you, if you understand. Yeah, two things to that. Number one, it happens to everyone, even myself. When I'm ready to go on stage and there's a large room or even a small room, um, that butterfly, and I learned that from Zig Ziglar, he told me, Bert, the day you lose those butterflies is the day you shouldn't get on stage because you're not going to come out confident. You're going to come out with arrogance. So one technique that I use is I take a deep breath and count it to 10. You know, you count to 10, you go, you count to 10, then you exhale, one, two, three. And when you count to 10 and you let all your air out, for the next 30 seconds, you're not nervous anymore. And you're able to grasp what it is, the message or whatever it is you want to give. So that's one technique. The other technique is you have what happens a lot of times, especially with the millennials, and it's not just millennials because there's a lot of other people that are not millennials and they do it too. They want to give you so much information that you have all this information, they want to give it to you all at once. Yeah. You slow down and usually get one or two bits of information. See, God gave us two ears and one mouth. However, as human beings, we spend so much time talking and not listening. If you do a little bit more of listening, you'll see that you might have the answer for the person, but let them finish talking, and then you'll be able to ask, ask them the question or answer their question. Mm -hmm. um, so just pace yourself and practice on pacing yourself when you're doing your presentation. Uh, practice on pacing yourself when you're talking to those that you love, your family members, when you're at the office. It's, it's, it's like practicing, like, you know, working out, like everything. Pace yourself. And there's times like you see me, I'll go ahead and scream and I'll say, I'm not screaming as, as I'm passionate. I'll speak fast and then I'll slow down. It's really pacing yourself. So I would work on pacing myself and those deep breaths right before a certain presentation or something, they'll cool your nerve just like that. And you'll be able to actually deliver a lot better than ever. Alessandro, another good thing is also stay hydrated. Uh, make sure that you drink some water before you go into your presentation. Because sometimes when you get nervous, your mouth gets really dry and you, you start getting caught in mouth. So keep yourself hydrated. That's something very, very good that Bert has taught us throughout the years when we're going to go speak in front of people. And speaking in front of thousands of people can get really scary. Another thing that I like to do uh, before I go anywhere, which Bert has always thrown me out there in all kinds of audiences all the time, um, is that I go out there and I make sure that I connect with me. Okay, so that I know that I want to be speaking to somebody and, and delivering my message to the best of my ability with all my heart and all my knowledge to whoever's listening. So that usually calms me down a little bit as well. Serge is a great trainer, great mentor, but find your voice. And once you have your voice and, you know, Joe has his voice and you guys will become a stronger army. Because, and that's what I do with my people, is like everyone in my team has their own voice. So why? Because that's a market that I probably would never connect with because I don't have that voice. So a lot of times things are not said exactly the way I wish they would say it, but that's okay because they're targeting and marketing to people that I probably would never be able to. So finding your voice is really important, which is what I was telling Belinda. I definitely appreciate it. It's true what you guys are saying, both uh, the, I need to hydrate, because yesterday I was actually giving a presentation, and halfway, I was, I was running, out, running out of saliva, and I was also going super fast, because I just wanted to get everything out of the way, but I, yeah, it's true, I got to slow down, so you can listen more. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. Felicia's recommending a sniff of lavender also to calm the nerves. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's Those nice. remedies are excellent. By the way, I you definitely need to connect with Felicia because she has herbal remedies and um, what's the other stuff that Oil. she, she oils. I mean, I was on the cruise and I was having an asthma attack and I couldn't find a pump on the cruise. And what helped me get to most part of the cruise was her oils. So you have no idea the members that we have on this mastermind group. You guys definitely need to connect with one another. That's what it's all about. All right. <laughs> hey guys, it's Lisa from Long Island, New York. How are you guys doing? Good. Wonderful now that you're here. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. I got it's two it's a two part question, but it's actually for the blog and bless you, Bert. Thank you. For the for the show and for his show. You do know that I help um, James, which is Inspirational James, do his show and the blog. What I need to know is how can he attract more listeners 
to the show and viewers to the blog. Right. How can, and this goes for both, any one of you yeah, guys to help. I want, I want you to explain what you guys are actually doing now. Because Alex doesn't know everything that you guys are doing. Oh, okay. Right, so um, Alex, you, you do know about the radio show because you guys, you've, you've listened uh, once or twice already with everybody. James is also writing a blog. It's inspirational dot, uh, inspirationaljames.com. Um, he's writing a blog. Basically, right now, the blog is just beginning with about part of his life and his family and a little bit about what we're doing with holidays and, you know, functions. Um, in the beginning, when he started, we had so many viewers, like 23 viewers from the first day. Now it's like just trickling down. Um, and we're doing it every other day. I'm actually writing it, you know, and we're going over it as I'm writing it and typing it to him. And, you know, he's telling me. But I want to know how how can I we, he can attract the viewers, you know, to read it. What what can we do to make it stand out? Well, going back to um, kind of what we were telling Chevy is that you need to strategize. You need to know who who were those listeners that were listening to you. Reach out to them and ask them what did you like, what did you not like, why did you leave, why did you come on. You want to know these things, so then you can go after the same kind of people that were enjoying and joining. So if you don't know who they are, then you don't know how to market to them. Because if, you, if you're you like, yeah, in the beginning, you want everybody to listen, but that's not realistic. There's a certain niche. There's a certain type of people that are going to be listening to you. I don't listen to you because I don't have the time, not because I don't have the want. Right. So I, I get to catch it every now and then when somebody in the office has it on. And I'm like, oh, my God, what is that? Oh, that's shit. Oh, that figures. I love the music. So you need to do that. Also, the people that are your loyal listeners, you want them to go ahead and send out testimonials or samples. And you need to create little things, uh, little tokens or something so that people can share them and more people um, that are part of your target audience. So if, you're, if James is saying a specific message from his experiences, um, then what are those experiences and who are those people that are experiencing the same things as James and where are they located? Then you go to the core. Oh, this is where these people hover. This is where they're at. And you've got to figure out a strategy on how you can approach those people that are going to be the most interested. It's not to say a target audience is you have that target in the middle, but it's not to say that you're not going to affect the people that are outside that target, which mm -hmm. is primary target, secondary, and, and so forth, right? You're aiming here, but you will capture some others. So that's definitely what I recommend that you start with first off. Yeah, and another yeah. thing that Valerie just told me, uh, told me one good thing is about doing guest blogs. Like get other people that are in the industry and have a larger following or the same amount of followers that might want to do a blog as a guest on his site. Because then uh -huh. it, you're, it, it's, um, it, collaboration is really important in today's business world. And a lot of people are not doing it. I mean, I'm doing it. I'm bringing some of these great speakers, you know, to mastermind. And because I brought in a certain speaker, that person brings me in 20, 30 people to watch that day. Out of those 30 people that watch or listen, uh, five people might join. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, being able to work with other bloggers that are doing the same thing and having them contribute and he can contribute on their blogs. That's how he becomes, he gets known in different circles. But as long as in the same demographic in the same market, not that he's going to just be a blogger like for me or for Chevy. That's a different demographic. If he's going mm -hmm. after a certain group, that's who he wants to start connecting with. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you, guys. I look forward to actually seeing you guys in September. Can't wait. But I'll speak to you guys soon. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. We have three more questions. Hey, that living room looks familiar. <laughs> Ooh, I know. <laughs> so, I'm Maggie. I'm... I'm from Poland. I live in Mexico. Now I'm in Miami. <laughs> Apparently she's staying with us. So, you know, that's, this is what it's all about. <laughs> the world is small. So I'm looking for a best option to create my web page for my new internet store. So would you like to recommend me something without like, like Chevy uh, Gun, he's having the troubles with limitation. I, I want to start like from, from zero, but to start good. So what can you offer me like? Well, hey, you know what? I'm gonna do something just out of the norm. First of all, LJ, LJ, come here. 
Come here. LJ is going to, you know, he's going to tell you a couple of sites that you can go. I don't care. Come here. Come here. <laughs> LJ, tell her a couple of sites that she can go to. And for all everyone else is watching, yeah. you know, a couple of sites where they can get real affordable website templates and some. You know, okay, cool. Well, there are a few options. First of all, hello, everyone. My name is Charles LJ Poland. So um, there's a few places that you can go. Now, uh, WordPress is a popular one at the moment. You can go to WordPress and they'll set you up with um, not only how to make your site, but they also have a lot of custom templates that you can custom get to know that. Now, if you kind of, if you already have a host for your site, then you can go to another place called ThemeForest. ThemeForest is specifically a bunch of different uh, customized uh, what do you call it? templates basically affordable really affordable. yeah really affordable I you're mean, looking at a good five thousand dollar website you can get mm -hmm. it for like 20 bucks yeah. 10 bucks if you go to wordpress uh i believe you can get a uh without a domain i believe you can get a free site without the domain now if you purchase your domain i believe it's just a little extra for you to actually host it but wordpress comes with a lot of um a lot of uh, plug-in templates that you can use for free uh, there's a lot of other uh, sites out there, but those are really the top ones that a lot of people are using and are kind of, you know, professional standards for today. And there's lots of tutorials on WordPress where you're able to put in what they call plugins. So you're going to be able to put in a shopping cart or, an, or a blog or attach it to your social media. And there's lots of things that you can do on WordPress. Um, also, you know, just to start from the basic stuff is get your domain name you can go to godaddy and they'll usually cost anywhere sometimes they have a, spe a special where you can get your domain for a dollar your www.whatever.com and um you can host it even with godaddy which we've had uh, good results from in the past and you can do it as low as ten dollars a month to host your website so it's very cost effective you're talking about less than fifty dollars to get your website up and running okay we have, we have one more person any ideas anything you can tell the rest of the people. birthday girl. Yeah. Woo! What Charles LJ said <laughs> <laughs> completely on point. I would definitely go to GoDaddy and buy your domain. You can buy it very cheaply. And then you just have to buy a hosting package there, which again, it ends up being, I think, between five to ten dollars a month. And within GoDaddy, you can install WordPress and then you can get a theme from themeforest.com. Perfect. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and contact Alex, Maggie, since you're like really close to her today. You're in the same house. And I tell her to help you out on just creating a chart of the four or five pages you're going to need. She's really good at that. You know, so at least you start off with four or five pages is really what's important. And then you grow. As you grow, your site is going to grow. That's so cool. That's everything what I need. <laughs> And you not only look, not only are you here, you're getting it through the internet, which means you can go home and watch it again, just in case you miss anything. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> thank you, Maggie. Thank, thank you so much. I mean, think about it, guys. When was the last time that you have access to BOA team and be able to ask any questions you want? Oh, look who we have. Hi, everyone in the Bat Olivo crew. I love you all. Um, my name is Andrew and I'm from Toronto, Canada, originally from Uganda. And I have two questions for you, Bert. Um, the first day that it hit you and you said, you know what? I need to make a change in your life. You, I need to like make this decision. What skills or principles did you apply that helped you to keep moving forward? I'm gonna have Alex answer that for me and then I'm gonna give you my feedback. So what do you see me or you doing every time we get stuck, Alex? Because we still do that. You know, our life is not perfect. We still have these challenges and these plateaus where we want to get to that next level. And it's an ongoing process. That's why I tell people self-help and what it is that we do is not something you do for three months and you're perfect. It's something that you are setting yourself up for the rest of your life. Again, it goes back to strategy and, and communication. Uh, one of the first things, um, Andrew, that Bert did when we're going on this journey is that he, he and I sat down and he told me, this is the journey that I want to go on. And if you would like to be on this journey with me, just let me know. But at any time, if you want to jump off and go independent, then by all means do it. But this is the sacrifices that we probably are going to face and the sacrifices that we're willing to take our family through. 
So you really need to have that clear before you go on that journey, because during that journey, all kinds of things, you know, fall in your path and, and, and you get all confused and, and desolate and you, and, and just so many things happen to you. And when, and one of the things that whenever things start going a little crazy, because everybody's life goes crazy at one point or another, if it's not your children, it's your, your parents, if it's not your parents, it's your siblings or your husband or your cousins or your grandparents or work or something happens. Um, and you need to realize that if you have a chart, if you have a strategy and you know where you're going, then you're able to say, oh my gosh, you know what? I'm off track. Let me go read. Let me go grab my journal. Let me go grab my instruction manual for my own life that I created and get back on track and make sure that you evaluate it again and say, do I need to make any changes or is this still valid? Because you need to update it as well. So that's definitely something yeah. that we've done as a family and as a team well, uh, all the time. Yeah, like she was saying, as you evolve your journey through life, your tools are going to evolve. You know, I was doing extremely well a couple of years back before the economy hit. And then right after the economy hit, my mom passed away. And for those of you that know my story, you know, my mom was my world. You know, never had a father, no grandparents, no brother, no sister. My mom was everything. So it was like everyone, my whole entire family passed away at that one time. And I started second guessing myself. Is this something I want to do? Is this something that, you know, am I going to continue doing this? And it's funny though, because at that precise moment, I was in the middle of a road tour in Belize, helping the children. And there was a lot of confusion, a lot of dialogues going in my mind. My mind became my worst enemy. With all these tools and all these years applying all these tools, I'm still a human being. And certain things are going to affect you. It took me about two years to get back on my feet. You know, I gained over four, you know, almost 100 pounds. I was at 308 pounds. I just lost 42 of them. So I'm not saying that your life is going to be perfect now that you got involved in this world of self-help. You're going to have challenges. You're going to go ahead. But the thing is, you start learning all these tools, like, we, like what we do in Glide and all these other social media. When I give everyone tools, I'm giving you a bunch of tools so you choose what tools work for you. And once they work for you and you're seeing that your life is shifting for the better, you can always go back to that journal and say, you know what, what was I doing two years ago? Because I bet you if I did that again, I'll get back to where I was. And some of it will work, some of it won't work anymore because you're different, but at least it'll get you back to where you were in a comfortable place to continue to succeed and grow. And also, Andrew, it's really important to have a, a good, and I don't just mean like a team, like an internal team, you know, like Bird and Val and, and Eric and, and Charles. Um, I mean that you need to surround yourself with people that are going to elevate you, people that are going to make you feel good, and people that you can have a sounding board on so that you can run an idea by them and you value their opinion and then you can get feedback from them somebody who has had success in that area, because you don't want to ask somebody, um, you know, how to fix a Mercedes when they've never had one and so forth, you know? So you want to ask somebody who's had experience and success in what it is that you want to grow or, you know, or get to that next level. But also keep in mind, a lot of people will tell you, but Bert, I'm not around those people. I don't know people that fix Mercedes. Don't worry about that. Because as you start changing, those people will come into your life because you will start attracting new people in your life because that new vibe that you have, that new style, even though it's the same clothes, even though it's the same words, you will use them differently. It would look, it, it shows different in other people's eyes. So it's all about changing you. When you work on you, your world will change. Thanks. Um, my next question is, um, ego, you just meant, you talked about a little bit about ego. I know you're probably going to go in detail, but like, what are some of the obvious things that you can, you know, like, you can like, how can you tell that you, you're ego, egocentric or like, what are some of the things, the characters of being an egocentric person? Because like, I, 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 I feel like sometimes I believe in myself so much that I feel like, it's just like how you're gonna say like nobody can stop me down, right? Nobody can stop me from being what I wanna be. Does that sound egocentric in any way? That doesn't sound uh, egocentric to me at all. That just sounds like you have confidence in what you're doing and you don't need anybody to knock you down from going in that path that you're going through, Andrew. When somebody is egotistical, basically it's all about them. 
and they they are the best they know everything they don't take advice they don't take any criticism or constructive criticism that you throw at them and the conversations are always about what's in their life or everything is around them and they don't really listen or want to share it's just them and you are just sometimes non-existent in that world and and they you know when when you have a good relationship and a good communication with somebody you can bounce ideas off of each other direction yeah but it doesn't mean you're gonna agree on everything no you're not gonna agree and that's the thing is that it needs to go back and forth it needs to go back and forth when if somebody's just telling you their way their way it's my way or the highway forget it. That's, that's when I, I'm sure you've probably heard that it's my way or the highway. You know, people need to listen to me or whatever. And, yeah. and people don't want to be around people like that. Honestly, I know you and, and I have you in other rooms that we are a part of. The day that I start seeing ego in you, I will let you know. <laughs> <laughs> All I see is that you've gotten more certain with yourself and the growth that you've done in such a small period in time that you've decided to make all these changes in your life. And you're, 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 you're just, you know, tapping your shoulder. There's nothing wrong with that. I know. No, nothing wrong with tapping your old shoulder because you know what? Not a whole lot of people are going to tap the shoulder for you, Andrew. Right. <laughs> so you know, learn to tap your shoulder. It's like when she says, you know, when you're there, when you spend, you're, you're having the conversation and you spend 90% of that conversation all about you and you're not really caring what someone has to teach you. There's a difference between criticism and constructive criticism. And criticism, I understand that you don't take it well as a person. I'm not saying you, I'm saying overall. But when you have constructive criticism, that's someone that's already done it, someone that's gone through the process and they're telling you their feedback. Doesn't mean you have to take it, but listen, you might learn something. And yeah. when you see that you're not willing to take constructive criticism, then you need, probably need to check your ego at that point. All right. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Andrew. Oh, we have welcome. one more and we are done. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as we enjoyed making it for you. <laughs> I really, I'm having a great time. Well, that's because I'm here, baby. Uh, that's right. <laughs> oh, look who it is. I am Anthony Oof. from Orlando, Florida. How's everybody? Good, good. Um, <laughs> so I talk enough to you, Bert. This question is to Alexa. Um, Alexa, being in a relationship with a strong individual, how do you cope with a, such a strong personality in a house? And how can you share your tools with others who are probably dealing with strong individuals in their house? <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is a loaded question. Um, well, I think that, again, uh, I mentioned it earlier that one of the things that Bert and I, and the reason, Bert and I have almost been together for 30 years now. And one of the, one of the things that makes our relationship work and our partnership work is the fact that we communicate a lot. And we put things, sometimes, you know, I can't stand to listen to his voice, so I'll do it in writing in an email, or I'll put it in a letter, or I'll wait till the mood changes a little bit, or I'll tell him, listen, you know, I'm going to, we're going to agree to disagree. Believe it or not, we do use that one because, and, and, you know, I am, my, my culture and my upbringing, my family is Colombian and there's something that we know as women, as Colombian women, is that your man is your man. And no matter what, I try to give Bert always his respect as a man so that he can give me my respect as a woman. And I think that's really one of the key things in having two strong personalities um, that I know that you have strong personalities on that side. Um, but communication is definitely the thing. One, one, I remember the first 10 or 15 years that Bert and I were together. If we were upset at each other, he made sure that we talked about it, whether I wanted to talk or not, because I'm not much of a talker, uh, although you can't tell tonight. But uh, he always makes sure that we never went to bed angry with each other. And that was a huge challenge that set a huge challenge for me to want to talk about something when I'm angry, because I like to shut down and not talk. And I know that drove him insane, but over, over the years, I've learned that talking is best or communicating because sometimes you don't, 
you're so angry and there's so much animosity um, or trying to get your point across in a relationship that you need to let let you know let it settle for a moment get over the initial anger and one of the excellent tools that Bert taught us is write a letter email write it whatever write it out put everything you want in there put out all your feelings put out everything that you want in there and don't send it wait till the next day wait 24 hours then read it again when you're a little calmer and then say oh my god was i really gonna send that or you know i'm behind this let me add a couple things you know so that is some that is a tool that i can tell you has worked miracles for me my family my friends and anyone close around us i have a book of letters <laughs> <laughs> no another thing like what she was saying is yes i am the man you know, pretty much, you know, in the company, I'm Bert Oliva, I'm the so-called celebrity, I'm the... You're the icon. Yeah, but I don't, I don't act that way, you know? It's like my team, that's why my team is with me, and they've always been with me for many years. I've had a team for, I would say, the past 20 years, and most of the people that are with me, until they find their voice and what it is they want to do, they're with me for 10 years. And the reason is because I believe that everyone has a voice, everyone's important, and I do listen. Sometimes it seems like I'm not listening. I am paying attention all the time. And, what do you think? Yeah, and I value everyone's you know, input and their thought process and their gifts. In fact, one of the things is that a lot of times I believe in my team more, more than what they believe in themselves. Yeah. I actually tell them, you could do better. I take and I build their potential and I bring it out in them. And that's what we've done with each other, Alexa and myself. So as much as people think, you know, Bert is the leader, he's the mouth and everything, man, it's, it's a balanced game. It's about balance, finding whatever balance works for you and your relationship. And then I, I have to, I have to agree with him that, you know, one of the things is that we try to balance each other. Sometimes I have to lead and, and he gives me the authority to lead especially when he was down for those two years he was talking about and i was beyond myself i was like please let him come back so he can lead again i don't want to do this and then you know it goes back and forth it depends sometimes i'll take the lead with the children and then sometimes he takes the lead and 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 it's like i say constant communication and we never try to undermine each other's authority with our friends our family or our children right and me knowing like you know you said we talk to a lot a lot to each other Man, what you and Alex have done with your family, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's, I love spending time with you guys. I feel the love. I see the love. I hear the love. You guys are all about love, man. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, and, and, and let me tell you something. You're not an easy character. And a lot of people don't know how to take you. They don't understand that the side that I see is way different than what the rest of the world sees. And yeah. a lot of people can learn from that. Because if you give people an opportunity and let things play out, you might end up liking a lot more people than you think. And we always are, you know, society has created that, that you judge them immediately without knowing who they were. Look, when we first met, we didn't even talk to each other. No. Fact, we didn't think we were even going to be friends. And now we're inseparable. You know, I'm still yeah. busy taking You caught me on a bad day, man. That was a bad day. You caught me on a bad day. <laughs> you know, and now look at you. You know, you're going to give me Disney tickets, you know? <laughs> <laughs> ten four. It's ten four. Hey, congratulations, man, on all your successes and, and continue doing it. You know, and Alex, tell her we send her love. We missed you guys this Monday. So thank you for your question. All right. Thanks, guys. And I want you guys to give us feedback. You know how to contact us. We're in different social medias. We're on Glide. We're on Instagram. We're on Social Cam. We're on Snapchat. Contact us and let us know, you know, what you thought about this session. If you want more of these sessions, however, instead of just being Alexa, myself, and and Charles and and, and Valerie, it could be, you know, part of the mastermind circle. It could be some of you, you know, with your expertise. And if not, I can bring in other people that I know and, and do a, a certain panel, maybe a spiritual panel. So give me feedback. Feedback is really important. Alexa, thank you so much, honey, for doing this at the last minute. Because, you know, this is an idea of something I wanted to do. I wanted to change the pace and do something different. And she didn't know what the hell she was getting into. And she backed me up like everyone else on my team does. Like LJ was doing some back end work. And I'm like, no, no, you're coming on the camera. And he says, no, I'm not unless I'm Charles. So he's Charles. <laughs> By the way, when you start seeing Charles out there, it's his actual real name. His name is Jonathan Charles Poland. 
We call him LJ, but he's outgrown that, and he's growing into an amazing young man. And as of you, as of today, anyone that watches this, make sure that when you bump into LJ, he's no longer LJ. It's Charles. Anyways, guys, we love you. Uh, we want to, can't wait to see you next week. Have a wonderful week. And um, my name is Bert Oliva. And make sure to live life and don't let life live you. And I will see you next Wednesday. Register online and join us today for all new live interviews and weekly topics only at themastermindcircle.com.